Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, where people just send me stuff and I open it. Why? I don't know. Everyone seems to like it. I like it, so that's what we do. Mailbag. If you want to send me stuff, send it to that crazy Aussie bloke at PO Box 7949, Borkham Hills, New South Wales, 2153, Australia. Not Austria. Let's get into it. First suck of the sav here, M. Welch from Mission, uh, British Columbia in Canada, one of my favourite countries. It is a computer cable, so no idea what sort of computer cable. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, sorry, guilty of the uh, zoom in thing again. The problems of not having a video operator, which no, there's various reasons why I don't have someone operating the camera. It just uh, wouldn't be worthwhile. Hey, we're in. Oh, hang on. Yes. Ah, um, DIN 41612 uh, extender cable. I think he um, clued me up that he was actually uh, sending this and it's an extender cable for, uh, well, the DIN 41612 connector used in my HP uh, DSA. So that is, and I think he um, wired this thing up, you know, soldered this uh, gender changer himself. He's got like a protection cap on there. And there you go. I think he uh, went to the effort to solder that up like that. Brilliant. Um, that's fantastic. That will allow me to uh, test my HP DSA. And uh, other people have uh, sent in some extender cards as well. Let me get them and show you. And I think it's uh, Trackman44 on the uh, EV blog forum sending these to um, Sony. They've actually got uh, Sony on them, so obviously used in some Sony product. I'm not exactly sure what. Um, extender cards for uh, some sort of you know Sony product, but DIN 4161, uh, DIN 41612 connector, both the full way and the half way version. I the half way could be very important because I've got a half way version in the HP DSA for some of the lower boards in there as you've seen in the previous video so that will come in handy I'll just have to like uh, you know saw that down there and um, unfortunately the reason this board uh, won't work off the bat is because see some of the pins down there are shorted together on this power bus look at this they've gone to a lot of effort shorted those three pins there um, together and then got these three huge traces going like that on that side and uh, unfortunately I have checked the pin out on the HP DSA and those pins aren't shorted together so this is like designed for like a Sony custom uh, pin out but all the other pins are all uh, running separate traces all the way along there um, except in some of these other ones yeah it's not just those first three over there those ones there there and there so those first four columns of pins there are all uh, commoned up and unfortunately um, to get this to work as an extender card I'd have to get in there and break those connections all the way in there and it's a bit messy but uh, this is the only half length half width uh, extender card I've got so I'm gonna have to rework this one to um, make it work on the analog uh, board. So excellent, thank you very much, uh, Trackman44. And you can see the um, they've done the old uh, solder tin coating on there to increase the current handling capacity of those boards. So I've got two of them if I goof one up. So that's fantastic. And also, where is it? Uh, Ronald, I believe, um, sent me this one. And this one's a real beauty. It's from uh, Worth. Electronic, um, I believe you can, uh, Roth Electronic, sorry, you can, uh, I think you can still uh, buy this thing, and this is a proper extender card, no shorted pins, they're all individual, the uh, outer ones are larger um, for carrying, you know, uh, larger currents, but you can tap or you can break each individual wire, including that uh, ground path as well, so they've got all the dip switches and um, pin headers as well, where you can tap signals off i mean that is just a fantastic not only is it an extender board but it's a breakout board as well and i have actually uh, tried this i've put it in powered up my uh, dsa and it seems to be doing the business but i haven't gone any further than that so thank you very much ronald that is awesome and now i have a beautiful extender cable as well that i can uh, use to extend um, out multiple boards so I can use this one I can use this one plus I can extend out using that halfway one too beauty thank you very much guys yes I will get back onto the HP DSA 
repair videos as soon as I have time. Next up, David Walsh from uh, Kent in England. Fantastic, love England. Faulty Electronics from Her Majesty's Royal Mail. It uh, won't be Her Majesty much longer. When is she going to croak it, really? How old is she? <laughs> Sorry for all you royals out there. But, uh, gee, she's been hanging on for, like, ever. We have some faulty electronics. What do we... Oh, Sinclair! Woohoo! We have a Sinclair... Um, oh, is it the television? It's the Sinclair television. I've got a note. Whoa! Hi, Dave. I thought you and your viewers might be interested in this. It's a Sinclair portable flat-screen TV from the early 80s. And, uh, yes, I am certainly interested in this because I have been uh, looking at these on eBay. I was going to get one. So thank you very much, Dave. That uh, saves me the um, effort to have to source my own. The CRT, um, as far as uh, world's only flat-screen TV that used a CRT. The CRT is very unusual. Only mad Professor Sir si so Clive Sinclair would produce something like like this. It must have had his engineers pulling their hair out trying to make a CRT project round corners. Oh man, I can't wait to see inside this thing. Interestingly, in this model, the CRT is transparent so you can see the plates. Fantastic. E the EHT voltage is 2.4 kilovolts, which is produced by an overworked um, ZTX, ZTX655 and lots of multipliers. That'll be interesting. The custom Ferranti I see is missing from this unit. Ah. I used it to repair another one which is now working as a pick driven alarm clock. I should get out more. <laughs> yeah, we all should. The lithium, anyone watching the EEV vlog should get out more. That's my advice. The lithium batteries only last about 15 hours and cost a fortune, which is one of the reasons the product failed. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Dave. He, oh, schematic and service manual can be found here. Fantastic. I'll link it in down below. Thank you very much, Dave. That is awesome. And you can see I'm... Uh, there's our antenna on the top, by the way, and <laughs> it's just one of those uh, telescopic rod ones. And uh, it's interesting that you can really see right down inside that thing. It really is bizarre. I'm going to enjoy taking this sucker apart. There's just on-off and uh, volume and tuning, and that's it. You can see it going across, so obviously it's got some sort of... Uh, uh, some sort of, you know, a trimmer cap uh, slider type thing happening there. So that will be the next Teardown Tuesday, I'm sure. I'm going to keep everyone waiting because, well, that's what good performers do, don't they? Keep everyone uh, wanting to watch Teardown Tuesday. So that will be coming up. Thank you very much, Dave. We have one from Po Yu Chen from Taiwan. Don't get too many from Taiwan, so thank you very much, Po Yu Chen. Some lovely... Um, flora there, fantastic. So let's rip this sucker open. What have we got? Was there a description on the front? I forgot to look. But it's flat and uh, let's have a look. Yes, I'm working on Sunday. Uh, yes, the joys of working for yourself. Hi Dave's greetings from Taiwan. I'm guessing I'm one of the very few viewers from your country. Yes, um, I'm not sure where Taiwan stands on the uh, YouTube uh, subscriber list, but I don't think it's uh, up there anyway. Um, all of you that have been very helpful. E student, excellent. There's just lots of stuff they don't teach you in school. No kidding. I came to realize that to become a true electronic engineer, one has to learn so much stuff, and I barely touch any of them. Well, I'm still barely touched anything after doing it for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it took me 30 years, and I still know nothing. Clue does several photos I took. Ah, oh, film photography is my other hobby. The tall building is Taipei 101, once the highest building in the world. Other than sh shots I took at various trips. Oh, instead of postcards, I get photos. Brilliant. That's a lovely artistic shot, actually, of the uh, Taipei 101 building. I presume it is. That's awesome. Uh, we have sunset, ducks, and what is it? Some sort of flower with arty uh, brocade uh, effect happening there, perhaps, and some lovely bush. Thank you very much. One from Daniel Wood from Focus Designs in Washington in the United States of America. We have a t-shirt, love t-shirts, and a paperweight. A, what's a Lichtenberg figure? I have no idea what a Lichtenberg figure is. So let's do it. Does this have one of these rip stop things? Uh, one of these rip open things? No, it doesn't. Okay, whatever. I'll just uh, rip. Ah, there we go. We have our figure. And we have a nice t-shirt. Oh, it looks like a quick 
some of the uh, quick dry ones, extra small size, excellent. I am small size, by the way. And postcards, woohoo! Ah, he's plugging his wares here. Look, it's a, um, a what looks like an electric unicycle. This is uh, focusdesigns.com, $17.95. I presume that's uh, United States dollars, but doesn't that look spunky? Wow! Jeez, I want one of those suckers. That looks... That looks really good. I wonder if it's like a uh, Segway uh, balancy uh, type thing or not. I guess we'll find out. Convenient. Only weighs 27 pounds. I don't know. What's that in kilos? Divided by 2.2. Uh, foldable. Fits anywhere. Practical. Travel to work. Green technology. Is used seamlessly with public transport. Yeah, you just pick the sucker up and go. It looks like it has just a... Uh, uh, maybe a quick, is that a quick release there for the uh, seat height or something like that? So maybe you can just drop it down on public transport and pick it up. Does it have like a handle on the side to, I guess you'd uh, carry it by the seat, I guess. Geez, that's not a good look, is it? On the, you know, let's carry it by that. Hmm. Um, 12.5 miles an hour. Geez, what's that? Kilometres an hour, bloody miles. Uh, 30% inclines, that's pretty good. Up to 10 mile range and 325 pound capacity. That's a big person at 325 pounds. What am I, 170 pounds soaking wet or something like that? Um, thrilling ride, beautiful design, advanced technology. Lean forward to go, lean back to stop. Okay, so it is like a Segway type thing. Sit or stand to ride. Wow, I want one. Yeah, a self-balancing unicycle. Oh, man. I want one. It goes on my Christmas list. And I'll link to the page so you can see it in more detail, but there it is. It just, yeah, it's a thing of beauty. It really looks very nice. Starting from $17.95. What are their options? I don't know. What sort of options would there be on this thing? No idea. Turn assist. Ooh, smart sense. Fantastic. Pushback. Motion learning technology. Ooh, it learns. The SB you seamlessly interacts with the human body to ensure a smooth ride. Our motion learning technology, trademark, uh, uses state-of-the-art sensors and thousands of calculations per second to actively learn your motion intent and deliver a unique ride experience. That is interesting from a, you know, a learning algorithmic uh, point of view. It's not just one, it learns your individual technique, I guess, to better uh, balance you. Uh, you know, out of the box, it might not perform as well, um, you know, I'm sure he's going to jump in in the comments or on the forum and uh, tell us all about it if you've got any questions. But this looks really jazzy. You know, I'd love to sort of, you know, if you're traveling to work on a train or something like that, carrying something like that, much more convenient than a bike. Um, that is brilliant. Excellent work. Five reasons why you need this. Go running with your wife now. Well, that's a bit sexist, isn't it? 5% of my audience are female. They might go running with their husband or partner. Jeez, doesn't have to be men and a woman. Really explore your city. Inexpensive midlife crisis. That's what I'm going through. <laughs> and it's got to be inexpensive, otherwise uh, she, who must be obeyed, gets a bit upset. No parking fees. Brilliant. And you'll be the coolest guy on the block. I want to be the coolest guy on the block because I am totally uncool because I'm a nerd. Speaking of which, all the nerds here at work watch your videos regularly and usually greet each other with the famous Dave Jones. Hi! Pretty generic term. I wanted to send you a couple of shirts and a Lichtenberg figure just to say thanks for making us even nerdier. Thank you very much, Daniel, and the nerds here at Focus Designs. Excellent! How many people you got working there? How many of these things you sold? We need answers to questions in Washington State, not Western Australia, of course. Nothing wrong with Western. Hi to all my viewers in Western Australia and Washington State. I've been to both Washington State, Washington DC, which is totally different to uh, Washington State, and I've been to Western Australia. Love them all. Beautiful shirt. Love it. This is the extra small one, and it's still a bit, you know, uh, flappy. I, I do like tight-fitting t-shirts. What are you, Yanks? You know, extra small? Give me a break. Gave me a uh, small one as well. Excellent for dagging around. I like the uh, quick-dry um, fabric on these things, self-balancing unicycle. Look at that. Beautiful. And the best part, full frontal nerdity. Yeah. And here's this Lichtenberg figure. I'd never heard of this before. I googled it and sure enough there is a wiki page for it. And what it is, is the electrical discharge, a high voltage electrical discharge um, on the surface or inside of an insulating material. In this case, like a, you know, some sort of uh, polycarb uh, type thing. It looks like it's happened 
right in the center there so I'm not sure how they generate it's not like they've done it on the surface and uh, you know and just joined these two together so it looks like they've applied you know high voltage on here and it's penetrated through to the center presumably some sort of you know weaker point in it I don't know how it actually uh, forms like that but look it's like a fractal type pattern and uh, you see these in that uh, lightning strikes of you know and uh, the wiki page uh, shows these sort of uh, Lichtenberg type figure lines if you're uh, on a person's body if they've been struck by lightning and stuff like that so really fascinating phenomenon that is really awesome let me see if I can get a good close-up of that there we go look at that that's just terrific look at those branching lines off it is very very fractal random but very fractal like it is just brilliant and Oh, just physical phenomena like this just uh, really interests me. It is fantastic stuff. That's the uh, penetration point on the uh, top there. That's physically quite rough. And then it's penetrated into the center, as we saw. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, please let us know where you actually got this thing from. Did you generate it yourself or did you uh, buy it somewhere? So there it is looking into the side again. And it's not just... You know, it, it's fairly narrow and flat like that, but it is quite furry, I guess you could call the pattern inside there. But wow, that is just, that is truly remarkable. I tell you what, that would make like a terrific, uh, you know, pendant uh, jewelry type item. You know, if you get it encased in that polycarbonate like that, you could, uh, you know, really, you know, polish and round that off. And that's just... Ah, oh, it's a thing of beauty. One of the best mailbag items ever. And I find it also interesting to note that they haven't gone to the edges there. So I wonder if that is a deliberate phenomenon. Because it doesn't look like this block has been like manufactured, as I said, like, you know, glued in some way or something like that. So it looks like they've got the block and then just applied the high voltage to it in some way. And But it hasn't gone out to the sides and it is that square shape around there to match you know I'm assuming that if you had a round block of polycarbonate you'd probably get a round uh, pattern of these fractal branches coming off and then sort of dissipating kind of thing at the outer thing so anyone who's done any research into these things uh, please let us know in the comments or on the forum Last and hopefully not least, from Derek White in Taylorville, IL, Illinois, I guess, USA. Um, I can vaguely read that out. I think it says oscilloscope. 38, oh no, uh, 15, 250, I don't know. Anyway, something oscilloscope. Ooh, it doesn't weigh a huge amount. It's a bit, you know, big. So what is it, like a uh, uh, handheld uh, scope or something like that? Only one way to find out. Crack it open. Let's have a look. And a oscilloscope. Oh, oh, hey, bit of a hey, tech DMM oscilloscope. Wow, check that out. I have never seen that before. Tektronix 213. Geez, that's you know, it's got the real old Tektronix symbol on it and uh what do we got here we've got input couplet look it's a well, common milliamps ohms external trigger power on off external dc is that oh no that's external dc trigger uh level slope it's got no knobs on it they've all vanished but uh input coupling that is that is weird horizontal magnification trace rotate vertical gain Wow, this is really old school. I wonder what the age of this sucker is. There's the... Oh, 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 hello! Jeez! Whoa, look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I didn't see the side there. All I saw was the top like that, and I thought it was some sort of plug-in or something like that. That, uh, you know, it did something, but oh, oh, that is just gorgeous. Look at that. I wonder if it works. I'm sure there's a note in there. Let's have a look. 
After watching your episode 430, the Fluke 91 scope meter teardown, I thought I would send you an analog scope meter, in quote marks, that I've had laying around. It's a Tektronix 213. Got it on eBay a couple of years ago and never used it. Uh, he's powered on before shipping, but make sure it still works. It might be interesting for a teardown to see some old school and high tech for the era. I'm sure it was. Uh, get a date code on this sucker. Um, and we'll... Uh, tear it down obviously not i think we've been going for a while here on the mailbag so once again as always in show business i'll keep people wanting more and this will be a tear down tuesday item along with our uh, sinclair tv so we've got two crt items to tear down but oh thank you very much derek look at that it's just it's just beautiful look at it ah oh, so cute it's got a tilt stand and all the controls on the side and look at that. I wonder what the switching arrangement is for that. It'd be, you know, a multi-ganged uh, switch, of course. So I'd expect to see, you know, a really sort of impressive bit of gang switching. Probably a uh, direct PCB mount, I'd say. You're not going to piss away uh, space in this thing with wiring and things like that. I reckon this is going to be... Uh, that'd, uh, that'd be my guess anyway. Or very closely coupled. And uh, and look, they've got the, uh, they've got the ganged mechanism on the uh, switches there. Oh, that's just, that's just old school pornographic. It really is. And here we go, I'm going to power it up. I've got my uh, step down uh, transformer, 110 volt uh, step down, because this is, uh, looks like it's 110 volt uh, powered. It does uh, look like it, it says it accepts uh, 45 to 62 hertz there, so it'll handle the 50 hertz uh, no problems at all. So here we go. Let's stoke this thing up. And uh, hopefully the magic smoke won't escape from this really cute... Hey! Look! We have a trace! Beautiful! Oh! Hang on! Oh no, because we're in ohms functionality! Hang on! DMM! RM? Huh? What's RM? I don't know! I don't... Oh, look at... Oh! Look at that! That is just beautiful! They've got the readout as digits! Oh! That's fantastic! Is that the vertical um, scale? I'm not sure. 5 milli, 10 milli, you know, 10, 100. It's not going to go up to 100 volts per division, is it? Um, that'd be absolutely enormous if it does, because there's your horizontal uh, knob down here, which is going to have no effect on your DMM, of course. Look at the volts. Look at that! Then it's got current, it's got resistance. We can whack some leads in there and. Uh, have a look. How do we get our oh, scope out? Okay, I didn't read it. Jeez, I should read the manual. There we go. Where's our... Oh, there's our sweep down the bottom. So it looks like we have to... Uh, vertical gain... Oh, there we go. There we go. There's our oscilloscope sweep. This is beautiful. Ah, oh, still works. Trace position. There we go. No worries at all. Wow, this thing is so small and light too. Is the in oh, no? There's the intensity. It's real. There's no burning on it by the looks of it, so works really well. Horizontal magnification, slope, power on off button. Here it is. Oh. And if anything, I'd say that's uh, slightly out of focus there. But, uh, you know, it's still uh, workable. There's a focus adjustment on the side. Got to get a uh, trimmer right in there to do that. But uh, let's, well, let's uh, whack it up to my resistance box and see if we can measure anything. And look at that. Not too far off whatsoever for my 10K resistance standard here. And if I whack it around on my 1K standard, and uh, it's got multiple positions here. You can see it. There we go. So let's whack it around to 1K. Look at that. That's probably still within spec. I'm not sure what the spec of this sucker is, but um, that is just hunky-dory. I'm happy with that. And that looks like it works a treat as well. Look at that. And just displaying a simple one kilohertz uh, sine wave on that sucker. And that, uh, it's not going to trigger at the higher magnitudes. Let me, oh, yeah, it's a bit touchy on the trigger there, but... I like it. This is just, ah, oh, it's just beautiful. Brings a tear to the eye. It really does. There we go. That triggers a bit better now on the higher end 
stuff. It's um, on auto triggering at the moment. So, but it's you know, it's not a magic auto trigger, that's for sure. But still, that's really beautiful. I don't even know the bandwidth of this thing. I wonder what the specs are. Yeah, it turns out it's a one megahertz uh, unit, so yeah, oh, it's it's usable, especially for its day. It was uh, twenty one hundred dollars uh, list price for this thing uh, back in its day. I'm still not sure of the uh, vintage. It didn't have that in the specs there at all. But gee, I don't know. What is it? Uh, late seventies. Uh, maybe something like that. Ah, oh, beautiful. And it still works a treat. And yes, that is 100 volts per division. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Derek. The mailbag just gets cooler and cooler. I love it. And uh, I'll definitely uh, have to, like, uh, use this in some videos too, just because I can. Why not? It's just absolutely gorgeous. And there'll be a teardown Tuesday coming up. Bet your bottom dollar. Catch you next time.